Well, welcome everyone to session number seven of FileMaker Group Therapy for Citizen Developers. Our topic today is using global fields. On the agenda for today, we're going to learn how to create fields that use global storage. We're going to witness firsthand the unique characteristics of global fields, which include that they share the same value across all records in their table, that they're accessible from any other table occurrence, even without a relationship on the graph, and that global field values are session specific. And we're going to spend a good bit of time demystifying what that expression means. Also on the agenda, we're going to use global fields to facilitate updates to common layout objects like, lo like slogans and logos. And in the process, we'll learn how to set the initial value of global fields in hosted solutions. We will have a bit of a contest today. During the first half of this session, please think up a fun slogan for our fictitious animal care provider that we've been building this database for over the sessions and submit it in the chat window. Your entry may be chosen as the official slogan for the animal care database. All right, so let's go working with global fields. First up, I'm going to jump into our animal care database. This database file, by the way, is available for download on the accelerate website, and I'll put the link to it in the uh, YouTube description once we get the video posted. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a simple global field here in the animal table of this database with file manage database. I'll create a new global field. I like to prefix my global fields with the letter G to remind myself and the, uh, the other developers who might work in this project that this will be a globally stored field. I'll create this field as a text field. And then to make it global storage, to make it use global storage, we'll click options, go to the storage tab and simply turn on use global storage. You'll notice when you do that, that all the indexing business goes away globally stored fields cannot be indexed. If that doesn't mean anything to you just yet, don't worry, we'll talk a lot more about that in future sessions. But fields that cannot be indexed uh, make it difficult to use them on the one side of relationships. That's uh, all I'm going to say about that for right now. All right, I'll say OK here. The word global appears in the options column for the, for the new G test field. And we'll say OK again. Going into layout mode, Oh, sorry, I've already got the G test field here. I don't even need to go into layout mode. It's been added automatically. And I'll just type something into this global field called maybe sample text, right? To demonstrate the first characteristic of global fields that they share their value across all records, watch as I move to record number two in this animal table. And even though all the other fields have different values in them, the global field has the same value. Likewise, throughout all the other records in the table. So that's unique characteristic number one, that global fields share their value across all records. Now, the second unique characteristic of global fields that I mentioned in the introduction is that they can be accessed from any, any context, regardless of whether there's a relationship there on the graph or not between where you are and where the global field lives. Remember, I defined that global field in the animal table. Now I'm on a layout that's based on the customer table, and there is no relationship from customer to animal. We can see that animal here is in the, in, under the heading of unrelated tables. Nevertheless, we can place global fields from table occurrences that are unrelated out on a layout, and they will work just fine. Now, to contrast that, let me bring over a non-global field, like this animal name field, and put it out here next to the other, and we'll see the difference. Exit the layout, save the changes. The global field displays its text just beautifully, sample text, even though it lives in another table that's completely unrelated to the current table occurrence on which this layout is based. But the animal name field, no such luck. It's an unrelated table, so we can't display data without a relationship. So that's another very unique characteristic about global fields. All right, I'll go ahead and clean up that little bit. That was really just to demonstrate those first two unique characteristics 
of global fields. And we'll get rid of this guy, save the layout. And I'll in fact delete that field altogether as well. Now let's do it for real. Now let's define a global field, actually a, a pair of them, that we'll really, we're really going to use throughout the rest of the system. Now, because as you've just seen, global fields are accessible from anywhere, from any table occurrence context to use on layouts, in calculations, and in scripts, it's a common practice to store them in their own tables so that you can easily remember where to find them. Let's create a utility table for storing our global fields. I'll jump over here into the tables tab and create a new table. I'm going to call it Z utility. I simply prefix the table name with Z because I want to have it sync down to the bottom of the alphabetized list. And it reminds me also that this is not really a, a user facing table. Create that table, go in and define some fields in there. A G slogan field that will be a text field and a G logo field that will be a container field. One by one, I'll change those each into using global storage with a double click, takes us into options, use global storage and okay. Again, a double click, use global storage and okay. And so now we've got these two globally stored fields in their own separate table where it's easy to keep track of where they are. Say okay. When you create a new table, you get a new layout automatically. So I'll jump into that layout. It's not using the same theme, but that's all right. Might actually be nice for it to keep kind of a different look about it. And now let's go in and apply a nice theme. Now the, uh, the theme that I had come up with earlier was uh, caring like they're our very own. Yeah, I know I wasn't a marketing major. Sorry. That's why I'm asking you all for good slogans, which by the way, I don't see any in the chat pod yet. So get to work coming up with your slogan ideas because we're going to need them shortly. <clears throat> One very interesting thing that you might have just noticed, I was able to enter data into that global field while there are zero records in this table. Yikes. That's not typical. You can't do that with a non-global field. You can create data, store data in a global field, even in a table that has zero records in it. Again, because of that unique characteristic that they share their values across all records. All right, so next, let's get back into one of the user facing layouts. And in layout mode, I'll replace this slogan down here, this just static text, with a merge field of the slogan stored in the global field over there in our utility table. So insert merge field lets you put a field reference into a block of text. Great for envelopes and um, uh, mailing labels and custom form letters. I'll navigate to the Z utility table and specify the G slogan field. And there we go. Merge fields appear just like in other mail merge environments in the double angle brackets, the chevrons as they're called. I'll go ahead and widen this out in case we have any really long slogan ideas. And then I'm going to do the same thing that is going to use the global field up here in place of this static image that I had had placed on this layout. And so I'll jump over here into the Z utility table occurrence, bring over the logo. I'm not going to need a label for it. So I'll bring over the logo and I don't want it to be filled with white like that. So let's make a few improvements in its look. First of all, I'll apply the minimal container style. This goes back to our last session, our previous session on themes and styles. But even that style has some things about it that I don't care for. For example, it's got a fill color of solid, but that's set to uh, full transparency. I'm just going to say I want none. And likewise, I don't want any line around it. And I don't want any padding inside it. So I'm going to set the padding to zero points all the way around. <clears throat> all right. And then I'm going to, of course, save the changes that I've made into its own new style so that 
every logo that we place on every layout can be governed by this one unique, uh, yeah, by this one unique style. Container logo seems descriptive enough. That'll remind me that whenever I select a container field, if it's the one that has the logo in it, that it should be, um, it should be stylized using that style. And then of course I'll save the changes to the theme as well, which broadcasts it throughout all of the layouts in this database file. Okay. Now I don't want uh, users to be able to get into this field. So I'm going to also turn off field entry in browse mode and find mode. This is really just gonna be for display purposes only. Note that those two options, anything on the data tab, by the way, does not get captured in your style. Only things that you can that you change here on the appearance tab get captured in your styles. Okay, none of the data settings like behaviors and data formatting and so forth. Next, I want to make sure that my logo field is the same size as my static logo, because I kind of like the size and position of that. So I'll select those two and we'll say, make, the, uh, make them all the same height and width as the larger of the two, align them on their top edges, align them on their right edges. There we go. Now I've got it exactly the right size and position. And now I wanted to go in there and delete the static logo. Hiding the field will give me access or better access whoops, to the, uh, the graphic there. That's what I wanted to delete. And I'll hit the delete key there. The static graphic goes away and the logo is the logo field, the global is there in, in its place. Next, I wanna copy and paste the logo and the slogan onto all the other layouts. So I'm gonna select those two. I've got them looking the way I want, sized and positioned the way I want, copy. But positioning when you paste isn't always a precise science. So I'm gonna get some help by bringing out some guides. I'll bring out a guide here and drop it right at the top of that field. And likewise, a vertical guide over here and I'll put it right over at the right edge. I can't quite see that. Let me scroll over just a touch. There we go. Let's put that right over at the right edge at 768, which is exactly on the right edge. And I want those guides to be uh, visible on all layouts. So I'm gonna right click on each guide one by one and share each one of these two guides with all layouts. That gives me kind of a nice magnetic pull to, um, to that spot on all the other layouts. Now I don't need the rulers anymore. And I'll save the layout changes and move on to the next layout. Note that I've already copied the field and slogan text object with the, uh, the slogan in it. So now I'm just gonna paste and drag those guys into position there. And likewise, move to the next layout and paste. And while I'm doing this, I want you to come up with your slogan ideas. Okay, we're gonna need a slogan in place of my silly one. So fill that chat pod with your interesting, clever, funny, humorous slogan ideas. Don't worry, there aren't that many of these layouts to be affected. What's nice about this is that it's gonna look like these things are static elements on every layout, kind of as part of the interface, part of the architecture of the, the database solution. When you know as well as I do that they are all placed discreetly or distinctly, I should say, on each layout if I don't get them in exactly the right place from layout to layout, as our users navigate around, they're gonna, they're gonna jump around. The, uh, the logo and the slogan would jump around a little bit and we don't want that. We want it to look like a unified, professionally developed application. All right, Don's suggested a slogan. Thank you, Don, I appreciate that. There's one from Katie. All right, fantastic, thank you all. <laughs> You've got a couple more seconds here to get your uh, slogan ideas submitted in the chat pod before I finish my layout work. A 
Can you imagine doing this without guides? Oh my goodness, I'd be all over the place. Okay, that's an iPad layout. I'm not gonna do that one. That's an iPhone layout. Oh, here's the web direct layout. I definitely wanna do that one. And it's the right, it's the same size as the desktop layouts. So there we are. Okay, exit and save. And we can see the slogan now, caring like they're our very own in the bottom left-hand corner of every layout. Look at that. Now, if I go to the utility layout and make a change, let's see, Dawn had hers in first. So I'll go with that care that is a precious, as precious as your pet. I like it. Care that is as precious as your pet. All right, so I've just changed the value in the global slogan field. Let's see if that changes it across all the layouts. Boom, nice. Desktop layout, yes. Web direct layout, yes. Fantastic, right? So that is a brilliant way to be able to manage content, common or shared content across multiple layouts. Right, so we see that global fields, they contain values that are shared across all records. And they're available from any other table occurrence, even if no relationship exists to it. And those things make it very helpful when adding and updating common elements across multiple layouts. However, once we upload this database to FileMaker server, that third and final characteristic of global fields becomes much more noticeable. That is that global field values are session specific. Now in preparation for uploading this file to FileMaker server, I'm gonna apply a few security settings. First thing we wanna do is turn off auto login. Under file options, you definitely do not want to put a database up onto FileMaker server or anywhere else where, where multiple users can get to it, where you've provided a, an automatic login. It's like leaping, leaving the front door of your house, not only unlocked, but wide open okay, with a sign on in it saying, come on in. And the second thing I'm gonna do is enable in our security command, access via several different connection methods. Here in Manage Security, we'll go into Advanced Settings and look at Extended Privileges. These extended privileges are all different means of connecting to a FileMaker database. Here's WebDirect. Here's via the FileMaker network, as they call it. But what that translates into is using FileMaker Pro on your Mac or PC or FileMaker Go on your iPhone or iPad. Now, those are the two connection methodologies that I want to enable right now double clicking on FM app, each one of these connection methodologies, by the way, has a keyword assigned to it. I'm just gonna say, you know what? Everybody, everybody, everybody gets access. Oh, and I wanted to make another privilege set too. Let me back up a step before I do the other one, then we'll come back. I wanted to make another privilege set as well for uh, users who need roughly data entry only capabilities, <clears throat> but um, with, some, with the ability to customize it. So I created a duplicate of this privilege set, which is not editable. The three privilege sets in square brackets are uneditable, but this one now is editable. Okay, now going back to working on our extended privileges, I'll double click on FM app <clears throat> and we'll say, yeah, we want people to be able to connect via FileMaker network or in other words, using pro or go, people who we put into that privilege set. WebDirect, <clears throat> excuse me, is also gonna be part of today's exercise, today's session. So I'm gonna make it possible for me, that is the full access privilege set, and for that custom privilege set that I just created to gain access to this database via FileMaker WebDirect using nothing more than a web browser. All right, we'll say okay there, and okay there, <clears throat> excuse me. Then the next thing I wanna do is change my account name Admin is the first name a good hacker is going to guess when they're trying to hack into your database. So definitely do not have, a, have an account name of admin or administrator. And I also applied a password. Let's say that we've got another user. His name's Bob. And 
he gets a password as well, of course. And we're going to put Bob into that new custom privilege set, the data entry only copy privilege set. All right, I'll say OK. It'll ask me to confirm that I still have uh, permission to make these kinds of changes. So I'll provide my new account name and password. There we go. <clears throat> and now we're ready to upload this file up to server. File, sharing, upload to host. It'll tell me it has to close the file before it can be uploaded. That's normal. Then it'll take us to an interface where we can see any instances of FileMaker server that we have access to or that we've declared as favorites. Here's mine running locally. I'll authenticate into the server admin console. Now this is not the database password. This is the password you created when you installed FileMaker server. It will then ask me for my account name and password for the database. And there we go. All right, the file is ready to be uploaded. I want it to be automatically opened on server after upload. That means open for business, meaning uh, ready to be accessed by multiple users. I'll start the upload process. It might take a moment. Ah, great, it went very quickly. <clears throat> Still has to do some processing. And then we get the option of opening it with our local copy of FileMaker Pro. That is use FileMaker Pro here on my local machine to open that database up. That's fine. We'll provide the account name and password. And now we're back in Animal Care 007, but the one that's, that's hosted on FileMaker server, not the local copy that was on my desktop that we've been using so far in this session. Okay, back into the slides, just a quick note, <clears throat> global field values. Once the database has, is hosted, it's global field values being session specific that means that each global field starts with the value it had the moment we uploaded it. That is the last time it was an unhosted database. This is critical to know, critical to understand. Once a FileMaker database is hosted, a global field has the, uh, each global field has its initial value determined by the value that was in it the last time it was a local unhosted unshared database, okay? So the slogan that Don submitted, care that is a pre as precious as your pet, that's the default value in that slogan field. What's the default value in the logo field? Well, I left it blank. So the default value in the logo field is blank. Yikes. We're going to spend pretty much the rest of the session now figuring out how to manage that business right there that I just described. Okay. So again, the global fields start with the values they had the moment we uploaded them or the moment we, before we uploaded the database. Okay? After that, when a user logs into the database and changes the value of a global field, it's changed in their session only and not for anyone else. That's what we mean by session specific or that's one aspect of session specific. Likewise, when they close the database, their new values are forgotten and the original values will reappear the next time they log in. Okay. To demonstrate this, go back into the hosted version of the FileMaker database, and we'll go to our Z utility layout, and we'll change the slogan here. Thank you, Don, for your submission. That was great. Let's use Katie's. Caring vets. Oh, this is, she's got, even got poetry going on. Fantastic. For Healthy, happy pets. Brilliant. Caring vets for healthy, happy pets. Okay, so I just changed the slogan in the global slogan field. Let's see if that has made it over into the other layouts. Look at that. It's poetry. poetry. Fantastic. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using my nav bar, it's because although we built the nav bar in the last session, we didn't give it anything to do. So it's, uh, it's pretty, but uh, useless at this point. Don't worry, that'll be coming in a future session. Back to the theme at hand, the, uh, the slogan has found its way into each of the layouts because we've got that global field stored there. Fantastic. Likewise, if I were to go in and add a logo, let's say I drag and drop the, uh, the 
black version of the logo into the global logo field. We can see now there the logo sits as well as the slogan. Okay, that's all well and good, right? It's fantastic, it's working. No, watch, as I close the database, this is a hosted database, which means those global fields are session specific. And then I'll go and reopen it. The logo and slogan are back to their default values, back to their uh, original values, right? This is Dawn's slogan, not, the, uh, not Katie's. So, yikes. Now here's a, 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 a that's, that's what we mean by session specific. Once the database is hosted, a global field's initial value for each session is whatever it contained when, it was, when the file was last a local or unhosted or single user database. Also along those same lines, if you define a new global field after uploading the database to FileMaker Server, its default value will be blank. That is, if you create a new global field in a hosted database, it never was an unhosted database. That, er, that field never existed during the unhosted life of that database. So that global field's value will default to blank. Here's another manifestation of the session specific nature of global fields. Here I'm in a web browser and I'm pointing to my WebDirect homepage. Now, prior to just a few moments ago, I didn't have any databases hosted on this instance of FileMaker Server that were uh, uh, enabled for web direct access, but now I do. So I'm gonna refresh this page and there's the Animal Care 007 database that's hosted on that server. I'll log into it. I'll log into it as Bob so that we're using two different users. And that creates a new session and we can see the Slogan down here is the default slogan. Okay, now what if I have Bob change the uh, slogan? Will it behave the same way? So let's come back here, here and, and let's use Jeff's slogan now. We're gonna get everybody's in. Hand and paw, loving you forever. Oh, beautiful. Touching Jeff, thank you. Right, there we go. And so now we'll take a look at some of the other layouts. And there it is, hand and paw loving you forever. It changes across all layouts in Bob's session. Here's another one, perfect. What about in my session? Nope, it doesn't change because global field values are session specific. Bob connecting to this database in WebDirect is in a different session than Tim connecting to it in FileMaker Pro. Even if Bob had connected in FileMaker Pro, still a separate session. And so his global fields have values that are specific to that session as and mine do as well. Okay, so it changed, it changed everywhere for Bob, didn't change for me. Global values are session specific, even if those sessions are concurrent, even if they're happening at the same time. Now, is session specific ever useful? Well, yeah, if you choose to use global fields for storing temporary data or filtering portals or dynamic sorting or even dynamic relationships, that session specific, specific nature of global fields is wonderful, wonderful because Bob's changes don't affect me and vice versa. But the big question, of course, is how do we change the initial value of a global field? Well, here are two possible solutions. Option A, in the FileMaker Server admin console, we could close the database, download a copy of it, remove the old one from server, change the global field values in the local copy, and then upload that revised local copy. Okay. Now there's a huge, obviously that's a lot of work, but it, it can be done. But there's a huge warning that accompanies this. If your database has any container fields that are set to store data externally, the links to the externally stored files will break because you've now removed the database that they were linked to and uploaded a whole new one that doesn't automatically reform the connections. So that's a big thing to be aware of, be very careful with that. 
option B is to use scripting to overwrite the default values in our global fields on open. We'll store the desired values in non-global fields and then use a script to copy those values into the global fields at the beginning of every session. Okay, let's go and do that. Just like, I, just like I chose to store my global fields in a separate table, I'm going to store these non-global fields in a separate table as well. Create a table called Z resource. And in that Z resource table, I'll create non-global fields for both slogan and logo. Okay, text field, container field, respectively. And we'll jump in. Sorry for the siren going on behind me. I hope you can't hear that too, too loudly. And now if I try to create uh, an entry into this slogan field, it's going to say, hey, you, you, what are you doing? You got to create a record. Of course, this is a non-global field, a traditional field. We've got to create a record in this Z resource table in order to be able to enter data into it. And I just like Katie's slogan because of the poetry in it. So I'm going to go with that one there. Caring vets for healthy, happy pets. And likewise, I'll fill the non-global logo field with maybe the blue version of the logo this time. That black one was a little bit too dark. So there we go. And now we've got, a, uh, got each of those local fields filled. Okay. Since they're local, their values will not reset like global fields will. They are, they're just normal fields like any other field in any other table. Okay. Then we'll go in and create the scripting process to make it so that those values will be pushed into our globals. Now, as a caution, this Z resource table should only ever have this one record in it. And so as a measure of security, I'm gonna go in and make it so that Bob and any other users who are in that data entry only copy privilege set cannot create records in that Z resource table nor delete them. So in the Z resource table, these users can neither create records nor delete records. Uh, let's say that I trust Bob to enter new slogans, but I don't want him messing up that one record. I've heard some people refer to this idea as a global record, but there's really no technically no such thing. <clears throat> okay. Now, what I just did with that privilege set, I would also want to do with any other custom privilege sets as well to make it so that I and my fellow full access users are the only ones who would be able to add or delete records to that Z resource table. That's pretty important. Okay, now that we've got that security measure done, we'll go ahead and start creating the scripted process. Into our script workspace. Between last session and this, I've done a little bit of work, as you can tell on the database. I uh, created this script startup script that um, simply sets error capture to on and allow user abort to off, which are things that I think are probably desirable in just about every script. And so then in every other script, we'll have this script be called as one of the first things it does. And, and then to make that e even easier, I created a script template script that has some reminders to comment my script and that goes ahead and performs that script startup script, which will set error capture on and allow user abort off. Let's duplicate my script template. Oh, there we go, duplicate the script. And we'll call this new script initialize globals. Initialize globals. Okay. Its purpose is to overwrite default values in global fields. It'll be triggered by our on open script, and it doesn't expect any incoming script parameters. Okay. Hit return to make a new line. Now, First thing we would want this script to do is go to layout GTL and then hit return and we'll send it to the
the Z resource layout. There. Then we'll set a field, SF. Specifically, we're going to set the value of our slogan global field, our global slogan there in the utility table. We'll set it to be equal to whatever is in the local slogan field that lives here in Z resource. That guy right there. Okay. So that says, hey, take whatever you found in this field right here and push it into the global field slogan. Now the next step is gonna be very similar to that step. So I'm gonna duplicate that step and then just go in and change it up a little bit to say, okay, now let's populate the global logo field with what's in the local logo field. Type L, hit return. There we go, that's the right field. We'll say, okay, and then Anytime you use some set field statements, you ought to follow it up with a commit records step to lock those values into place. All right, that's all this script needs to do. Now I want our on open script to trigger or call this script. So I'll come over into on open, go to line one, because I want this to happen right from the get go. We'll perform script, that's PS, and we'll perform the script called initialize globals. Oh, brother. I don't think I saved the script yet. So its name is still script template copy. Sorry about that. That's clumsy. I'll go ahead and save all my scripts now. There we go. Now then the proper script name initialize globals appears in my perform script statement. And so our on open script will perform the script of initializing our global variables. And on open, if you recall from our earlier session, where we were talking about um, devices and getting ready for mobile mobile devices, the on open script is already set to run when the database first opens. We do that here in the file options command. File options, script triggers, there we go. On first window open, run the on open script. Okay, let's see if it works. I'll go ahead and close the uh, FileMaker version of the database and then reopen it. And we should get that poetic slogan, caring vets for healthy, happy pets. And we get our blue logo across multiple layouts. Yes, because of the global nature of those fields. What about in WebDirect? Does that work in WebDirect also? Well, let's see, I'll close out of the database here and then launch back into it, signing in as Bob. And we've got logo and slogan. So that rather simple approach lets us easily overwrite the initial values of our global fields at the beginning of each session. A quick note on that, this scripted approach does not work for external connections that use the FileMaker data API. The external connections like web pages, for example, that use the FileMaker data API to fetch field data because Access via the data API does not open a window and therefore it does not fire the on first window open script trigger. No problem though, just have the data API grab the desired field value from the non global field and then store it in a global or a session variable over there in the environment that you're calling from. All right, we've got a few minutes available here before our time is up. Any thoughts or questions?